Good day, Sith Society Seekers. I'm on silent and we're on the air with more Star Wars. Nice of the Old Republic to the Sith Lords. We begin today's episode on Approach and Final Descent to Gorban, the home of the Sith. There's a good place to go hunting for Jedi now, isn't it? We've hit the ground. This is Korriban. Why would one of the Jedi you're looking for come here? An adequate job, pilot. Perhaps here there is some trace of those who pursue us. I sense that we may be truly alone on the surface. There are signs of life on the surface. Beasts by the dozen. So don't worry. You won't be quite as lonesome as she makes out. You might want to keep your, uh, lightsaber sharp. Or do whatever you do in these situations. Although, I think that the pilot's mechanical devices are probably accurate. If there are Sith here, their numbers are few and they are hidden. It seems quiet. Just the wind. But deep beneath the surface, you can feel the pain of what took place here. This place merely tolerates sentience walking upon it. It is pleased to have been left alone. There is great power here for those with the ambition to use it. There is great power in this place, for those who can hear its call. There is much that will draw a Jedi to this place. The resting grounds of the ancient and more recently departed Sith contain many teachings believed lost. The most likely place to find our lost Jedi is the ruins of the old academy. Okay, that was a lot to unpack in that little, uh, in that little spiel there. Like first, wow, Kreia almost said something nice about Atten there. Adequate job is like for Kreia. That is incredibly high praise, you know. Um, what else is there? Oh, teachings. I, I think things that, like Visa said the same thing twice about great power being there to those who can who wish to wield it, to those who can hear it. So that's there's probably an interesting quest. I saw Hanhar walking around. Sorry, T three wandering through and just doing his shit. Reminded me. You saw Hanhar walking through. You know, I don't know if Goto wants to be part of this chat. I don't know if, if Mandalor is interested in this chat because he didn't say anything. But the other three, Visas, Atten, and Kreia, are all interested. Uh, on teachings of the of the uh, the Sith, well, um, I, how many times do I got to keep banging on about those Darth Bane books and the uh, the power that Bane found in the teachings of the ancient Sith? And you can find uh, I see. I, I, I probably <laughs> I don't want to say I'm the best advertisement for the uh, for the Bane trilogy, but I still think they're very good books. So I'm just gonna bang on about them at every point, even if it has been a long while since I've read them, probably about a year or so. But uh, no, they mentioned that Revan went looking for some, you know, all throughout the the books he went looking for ancient Sith teachings to grow his power, even when he was at the academy on Korriban. So, or Corban, as Atten said. Anyway, so what happened here? It was said that Revan intended to return to Corban to subdue any potential Sith insurgents, but Revan disappeared. It took a year or two for the Republic to send a force here to deal with any Sith that may have remained. They found Corban much as we have, barren and lifeless. It was assumed that the remnants of the Sith turned on each other, vying for what little power remained. The Republic found evidence that several Sith Lords escaped Korriban, fleeing to remote sections of the galaxy. Remote sections of the galaxy? And that include your old friends. And also, I, I think based on it said that Revan was going to come back but disappeared, with Mandalore just standing there, I assume he's just standing there in his usual spot he's got his headphones in and he can't hear jack because he could have contributed there yes i realize we could have come here first we could have come here goto get out of the way you're in block of the camera uh <laughs> i was gonna say yes i realize you can't really record everything a million times and i've said that a few times because you could come here first right after tilo so you could come here last like we are so, uh, do you think there are any Sith living here? Yes, she just said it. As lifeless as it seems, the dark side is very strong here. The Sith Lords would not ignore such a powerful place. There is much that can be learned, even here. 
You should go to the ruins of the old academy. If there are any traces here of Sith, that is where they would be. And how would they uh, miss a Jedi Master among them? I guess you think a strong Sith dark side presence might mask the presence of somebody strong in the light side of the Force. I think we've had it mentioned in the past that death and destruction does tend to mask... I think that's been mentioned in this. I mean, it could have been in one of the books I've read, like I, like I keep mentioning, but it was mentioned that death and destruction could uh, hide, shadow, any uh, any bright, any you know, bright light side presence. I wasn't sure if I wanted to go with bright light, light side presence or strong light side presence. Bright felt a little on the nose, you know. But anyway, what happened? We asked that question. So, yeah, let's go. If you walk Coraban's surface, you shall walk it without me. Okay. Any particular reason? I cannot. This place is strong with the dark side. It is difficult to center myself here. Coraban holds few secrets from me, but much that you should learn. Well, um, we do know from... I think that... It, it was, and I'm fairly certain it was mentioned, that it was a uh, restored content. A little cutscene, a little cinematic, that uh, she was at one point in time a Sith Lord, or part of the Sith Triumvirate. And they since found a new, new Tra. Don't like what Tra said. People at no-no. <laughs> uh, Corbin doesn't look that bad, I'm not afraid. You will be. Perhaps not. But I would caution you to guard your feelings carefully here. Korriban attacks the spirit and the body. And there have been few who can fight its power. Yeah, I just watched Ant-Man and the Wasp. I, I totally know what you're getting at. I've, been, <laughs> I've had some more time on my hands. I'll tell you guys at another point in time. But I've had some extra time on my hands lately. And so I've been uh, just doing a bunch of recordings, but I've also been catching up on Marvel movies, so I've watched, uh, I've watched Infinity War, and I've watched, uh, and I've watched Ant-Man and the Wasp, obviously. Uh, what do I have to catch up on still? Doctor Strange and Captain Marvel. That's a different discussion that we can, uh, I don't want to, uh, hold us up. So, f very well, stay here, keep the engine primed in case we need to leave quickly. I will remain here and meditate. Our link remains... I shall contact you and provide guidance when needed. The Academy is on the other side of this valley. Be careful. Dark energy fills these ruins, and even the fallen Sith live still. Oh yeah, that's for sure. There's a lot, a lot of instances in the old expanded universe in which the spirit of fallen Sith Lords come back in various forms. I think there was um, an arc at Luke's Jedi Academy. Uh, I, I know that. Uh, I'm pretty sure there was something. Oh, God. There's all sorts of, like, Sith-possessing people. Ancient Sith-possessing people or ancient Sith cults and stuff like that in various forms in the EU. Uh, I don't know who we're all going to run into uh, or which... I don't know any spirits. I assume that teasers because we're going to run into the spirit of an ancient Sith Lord. But I get the feeling that we might run into some some people who I might actually know the names of or actually know some stories of. So we'll get to that when we get to it. And I'll pontificate and educate and all that other shit then. All right, let's go. Got to bring along some crew. Let's bring along Atten. We still need a little influence with Atten. And now I gotta need frontline infantry. And I like Beodura as a person. I just don't like him as a dragon. I swear we had him skewed a little more to the dark side as well at some point. Mandalore could work frontline. We've had that chat before. The Handmaiden, a little too light side of line day. I know it's, it's a mild red, but... That's on mostly on my influence. Visus is an option. Visus would be a viable option. T3, I like him. Just not for this. Again, Gunner. I don't know what the hell you do. Gunner. Hanhar or Visus. We don't bring Hanhar anywhere. Yeah, sure, what the hell. Rip some people's arms off when you get the chance. Alright, let's roll.
All right into a cutscene. Just an overview of the landing spot. The structures you see around you are the plundered tombs of the ancient Sith Lords. Each tomb was once infused with the history and heritage of the old Sith Empire, containing great mysteries and powerful relics of the Force. However, even the many traps could not long hold back the curious, the fools, and the weak. And so these tombs fell, spilling their secrets into the hands of those unable to comprehend or preserve them. You guys see what I saw off in the distance there? Oh, you can't really see it from here, but... Eh, can you see him from here? Just running around so I can get a sight line. There they are. HK50 friends. Off in the distance, like so. Um, no, there was something else I was going to say and mention earlier and I forgot. It's... The Academy. You coming into Korriban in KOTOR 1. I don't remember much about it, but you come to the Academy in KOTOR 1. And... I'd have to assume the Academy then, because I know the Academy in the time of Bane... Had, you know, landing pads for you to land on, so... I don't know why Atten decided to park us. Like, he just liked the scenery. Just, he wanted to fly between the ancient Sith statues. And that all. So, I don't know. Now, she said they, the credits said these would have all been plundered. Now, most of them had been plundered. But, uh, even Darth Bane. Ahead lies the tomb of Naga Sada. Successor to Marco Ragnos, and the Sith Lord responsible for nearly conquering the Republic in the Great Hyperspace War a millennia ago. I'm gonna go with tell me more. Like, my knowledge of the ancient ancient Sith Lords is pretty, pretty spotty at best. More recently, this tomb was where Revan confronted Uthar Vin, the leader of the Sith Academy. When Revan left Korriban, the Sith Academy was thrown into turmoil. With their leader gone, many fought for the right to rule. And so, the Sith here turned on each other, resulting in the carnage you can see covering the surface of this valley. And let's be honest, rule of two or not, the Sith still fight each other for their rule. The idea sort of being that when one is too weak to lead, somebody kills them and the strong survive and lead, even if there is only one Sith in charge. So I'm guessing, yeah, we're not going to get plundering there. Naga Sadao is not one of the ones I'm particularly familiar with. I do know the name, and I also know the name Mark of Ragnos. Now that one, he comes up, and now here's another one that's collapsed. This was the tomb of Tulak Horde, known as the greatest lightsaber duelist of the Sith Lords. Yeah, I'm deaf. Oh, we can cut her off entirely if we wanted. Uh, I don't want to, because this is... This is interesting. This is... This is piquing the Star Wars Lord Nerd in me's interest. So, uh, yeah, let's go. His skill was considered remarkable, even in his time, when many true lightsaber masters lived. Are you saying that modern Jedi are... I, Tulak Horde is not a name that I'm familiar with, so I, I will... Readily admit that off the hop, so that's uh, not a name that I, I ever remember coming across at any point. Are you saying modern Jedi are poorly skilled with a lightsaber? What made him so good? Enough with the history. Oh, are you saying modern Jedi are poorly skilled with a lightsaber? If you were to face an ancient Sith Lord in combat, you would learn that we are as children playing with toys compared to the prowess of the old masters. See, that's mildly interesting, because it's almost like the... I'm trying to remember this, because I, now I'm, I'm thinking back to, you know, the uh, 20 years ago for Phantom Menace and, and the special features for that, in which, you know, George wanted a faster-paced, you know, a, a more elegant, a, a, a harder-hitting style of lightsaber combat for the prequels. Because he said, you know, this is the golden age of the Jedi, so they should be, you know, have much more prowess with a lightsaber compared to, like, you know, Luke. So, it's interesting that, you know, almost as time goes along, 
the skill with the lightsaber diminishes. Now, whether that was intentional or I'm just pu pulling in, you know, various pieces of information making, you know, an interpolation within interpolating means you've got, you know, sets of data. You know, Tulak Nord or whatever the hell his name is. Tulak. Here. Whatever long before this. Really kick-ass lightsaber duelist. And then, you know, get to about 40 years AB or BBY. And it's like, or no, 30 years. No, 20 years, because, yeah. No, that would be 20 years, BBY. Sorry. Why do I think 40? Uh, and it's like, they're still... Well, no, 30 would have been Phantom Menace, right? Yeah. So that would have... They still would have been pretty damn good then. 30, 20, and then by the time you get to Battle Yavin, like, most of the finer art of lightsaber dueling has been lost. So, I mean, just sort of you can take... It's just been a on a general downslope. If it, the high point was in the past. And anyway, so what made him so good? That is unknown. But supposedly, he created a holocron to teach his technique to other Sith. The holocron would have been laid to rest in his tomb. So how do we get in? Unfortunately, Tulak Horde's tomb was among the first penetrated by the grave robbers of the new Sith Order. If the holocron has survived, I doubt anyone living would know its location. Damn, I thought that was leading up to here's a new lightsaber technique, or he's a uh, boost to some lightsaber ability, or here's a feat, or here's this, that, and the other thing. So, oh, corpse. The broken corpses before you are all that remain of the Sith on Korriban. I doubt there is much to be gained from looting these bodies. It would be best to leave them be. I don't know what happened to him. I suppose he could be decomposing. But, uh, he does not look like he had a good time dying. Oh, oh, I'd imagine he didn't. No. Okay. Yeah. Let's, uh, just, uh, slide on. Oh, door number three. Don't mind if I do. I'm guessing... Oh, this one's going to be closed off as well. This way leads to the tomb of Ajanta Paul, a fierce Sith Lord. According to legend, the blade proved more fearsome than the master leading to his demise. The hell does that even mean? The blade proved more fearsome than the master. Junta Paul, I know the name, I just can't place it. Obviously predating this, but... Ajanta's dark specter lived on through the centuries until Revan entered the Sith Lord's tomb in search of the blade. Revan calmed the angry ghost of Ajanta Paul and showed him the path back to the light. Um, I don't remember that from the first game, but I'll take your word for it, so, uh, unless it's, no, back to the light, no, 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 that would, that would definitely be in the first game, because I think I said that Revan was, again, this is one of those things, we just talked about it recently, t tying back to that early conversation with Atten, like in episode two, maybe it was episode one. All the way back there, right? Where we talked about, uh, you know, just here's what happened. It was my, my first playthrough of KOTOR 1 all those years back was Canon Lightside. So that's what I've just been, that's what I based those answers on. So, yeah, okay, that, make, that makes sense. That makes sense. All right. You sound like you disapprove. Yeah, that sounds like a cray thing to disapprove of. One who has fallen so far and done so much evil does not deserve redemption. In a way, such a turning from one's nature is cowardly, a betrayal of the self. Sounds like a, was it a Simpsons joke? Maybe a South Park one? Eh, it sounds like a Simpsons thing, because the Simpsons are, always has this uh, occasional religious undercurrent to it, right? I'm talking about, uh, I want to say that, you know, Bart or Homer talked about, you know, Deathbed repentance, and that's their ticket to heaven. It's, it just reminds me a bit of that. It's like you're an un. I, I am not a religious person. Let me preface that. I was raised Catholic, but I, I so I, I'm fairly familiar with the teachings, or at least the teachings as far as the church is concerned. My dad was much better at teaching, you know, what the Bible had to say, because his mother, my my uh, paternal grandmother, taught Sunday school. 
Lutheran Sunday school, but Sunday school nonetheless. <laughs> so, uh, but no, it's it's one of those things where it's like um, you're a sinner all your life, and then it's uh, you know deathbed repentance, and there you go, you're good to go. Uh, best way I ever heard Catholicism put to some, like the teaching of Catholicism, it was ever put to me. And not being a particularly or at all a religious person, I I, I find if I found it kind of comical as uh, one way person one person explained Catholicism to me as Catholicism teaches you all the ways you're not going to get into heaven. So, I I just found it sort of sort of funny. It's like. Deathbed repentance, just like Ajunta Paul. Anyway, no one is beneath redemption, Crayon. No one. I, I almost feel like doing a last man's bad boy furniture store gag there, but uh, as, if you if you're not Canadian, you wouldn't get it. So hell, if you're not from the GTA, you wouldn't get it. So I'm just gonna leave that one. And Ajunta Paul is a fool. The dark side sustained him even beyond death, and Revan tricked him into surrendering to oblivion. I do prefer two to one. It is more true. Yes, redemption is merely a form of spiritual collapse, a fall few recover from. The deathbed repentance, which is the exact opposite of you, what you've been for the entire point in time. Lying to yourself. I like it. All right, corruption of the self. Lying to yourself. Yeah, same thing. Dark side points gained no influence with Kreia, but dark side points gained. I'll take it. Getting a little down the scale. It's always nice. Hi guys. One last one. As our as our entire episode thus far has uh, been history lesson. Not that that's a bad thing. Before you is the tomb of the great Sith Lord Marka Ragnos. A half-breed who possessed tremendous strength, both physically and in the Force. A half-breed? Well, that's rude. I know what she's trying to say. Maybe she can explain with the Tell Me More. Ragnos held power for over a century, using his cunning to turn his enemies against each other. His death left a great vacuum of power. We're standing close to the spot where Naga Sadao first confronted Ludo Kresh to vie for domination of the Sith. Their struggle nearly resulted in a civil war that would have torn the Sith apart before they ever threatened the Republic. It sounds like civil wars are common among the Sith. Yes, they are. All right, we'll come back to half-breeds and Marco Ragnos in a second. Let's go. keep going with the conversation tree. Yes, it is the way of the Sith. They must continually test their strength against each other even if it means destroying themselves. So what happened between Sadao and Kresh? Well, we know Kresh wouldn't, uh, too good for, uh... Didn't come out too well for him, nor, nor did that sentence for me. As fate would have it, a pair of hyperspace explorers from Sinagar landed on Korriban. Naga Sadao manipulated the Sith into believing they were a sign of impending Republic invasion. This fear resonated with many Sith who were discontent with the lack of expansion of the Sith Empire during the reign of Marka Ragnos. Thus, Naga Sadao became Ragnos' successor. Well, at least it was invasion. Well, I was going to say invasion. Eh, I'm not even going to touch that one with a joke or a political... Definitely not with a political comment. Not now. <laughs> not now. Definitely not. Even I know that's a bad... Okay, so half-breed. So, actually, that one... This might be one that I, I, I leave for a, a did you know. Uh, I haven't done one of those in a long while. But, uh, yeah, let's... let's uh, Because I know that the ancient Sith was an actual alien race. You know, relative to... Well, actually, all three of us. It was an alien race. And then, then there was... And then there was... Uh, the ancient Sith was also the... Like a group of dark side believers, I think, that end up here. And I guess if Marka Ragnos was a half breed, he was both humanoid and Sith, like in the in the species sense of the word. 
Uh, we might want to roll that all into a did you know for you guys right now, because that's not a strong suit of mine. Uh, lore knowledge, so let's hit us up with that. Alright, thank you future Steve. Mark Ragnos also, coincidentally. Uh, the Disciples of Ragnos are the chief antagonists of the uh, Star Wars Jedi Knight Jedi Academy game. That was uh, about 15 year old game uh, made by Raven Software. It's a really good game. I think I mentioned it on the channel before that I used to be pretty damn good at the multiplayer. But you guys can go uh, check that one out on Steam and probably GOG too, I believe. If you want to, uh, if you want to check that out, uh, I mean, leave it for sale. I mean, obviously, it's gonna get discounted down to now uh, five bucks, two fifty, something in that neighborhood. So, but it, it's it's a fun game, even if you don't do the multiplayer. I don't know how populous the multiplayer is or was, but I enjoyed that one back in the day. All right, so I think we've covered everything in this. Now, does this have a location on the map? Valley of the Sith? Valley of the Dark Lords. Indeed. Hey, I still remember a few things from that that's mentioned in Jedi Academy. Valley of the... Uh, I was going to say Valley of the Sith, but Valley of the Dark Lords. It's fine. Yeah. It looks a little different than it did in uh, Jedi Academy. So... Because it was at 14, it was at 15 years old. I mean, make it as old as this game. Also, good thing we didn't bring along HK since we got this company. So, all right, let's see what we got. Hi, boys. How's it going? Unnecessary observation. Targets acquired. Annoying recitation. Let us proceed to facilitate communications, recitation, and bring about the termination of hostilities. Yeah, 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 we've done this before. All right, I'm bored with you already. You go zap now. Uh, you're allowed to go in, Hanhar. Now you're honing in on me something hard. Let's hit up another heal. These guys have gotten a little... Oh, he's down. Alright. That was a good heal there. What's that doing back there? What happened to your weapons? I was gonna say, I assume he had to hand over his weapons at some point. I just don't remember when. I was half expecting, it's like, okay, I wouldn't expect anything out of him because he's probably just shooting from a range. Anybody remember what we had on him? Would have had a blaster rifle of some sort. Unless I accidentally gave it to, uh... Uh, to our boy, uh, Mr. Mandalore. We could. Oh, nice crit threat. It's not, oh, attack modifier minus two, not great. Heavy mining laser. Yeah, heavy mining laser might be okay. Oh, pla uh, Arcanian blaster rifle. Oh, I like it. Let's go. Now start shooting. Uh, just lightning them. Oh, or not. No, that, that didn't work for you. How about this one? Oh, he's a little tough bastard. Fortunately, that Wookiee toughness has done a number on everyone, so. Thanks for joining the party, Atten. Droid Wisdom Upgrade. What have we gotten? Droid number two, Wisdom Upgrade, Carbonate Emitter. And Remote Interface. Didn't use the Carbonate Emitter. And poor choice. And a Wisdom Upgrade. Huh. Interesting group of up upgrades. There we go, that one. So, oh. Ah, what's that stench? 
Bah, they smell worse than a hold of human corpses. <laughs> We're going in there. I don't care what you say. <laughs> ah. Put the Captain America, put the Captain America gif there. Thank you. <laughs> Alrighty. I don't know what's in there. If we should go in there, I don't care what you smell though. There is great power and dark energy within this cave. I would advise you to finish your explorations within the academy before venturing into the cave. Okay. Noted. A Shyrak? I feel as though I should know what that is. But I, as, I was going to say, the potential dangers of the cave didn't hit me until Craig called it the cave. Remember what you learned in the cave. Might want to... I, I'm, I usually... Shyrak cave. Ah, oh, it's going to be a load of them to hell with it. I mean, there's got to be something good in there. A dark energy, right? In there, and so if there's a lot of dark energy in there, then it's obviously going to be. Uh, looks like a really goth ha cath hound. Uh, goth hound. Uh, no, I was going to say that looks like it would be uh, a tukata, indeed. No, it seems like it would be helpful for, like, leveling dark side uh, points, yada, yada, yada. More where that came from. I gotta run point on all this shit? Everyone, everyone down. Man, they've, uh, holed up the uh, front door of the academy here, haven't they? Alright, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna just resist it. Oh, that's annoying. I see... Like, am I... Oh, no, I am doing damage to him. Or... Or them. Oh, a deadly Takata. It's a relative term, I, I suppose. Honestly, it looks a bit more like a goat than a cat hound, but hey. You can't call him a goat. Star Wars, damn it. So what the hell's this door? I mean, I could walk through there and just find out. Sith Academy. Oh. Okay, we can go in. Looks like somebody left the doors of the academy wide open. I have a bad feeling about this. Stop. The Tukata come from inside the academy, judging by the horrid stench that grows stronger as we approach the academy. <laughs> oh. That. That one. Yep. <laughs> Uh <laughs> Get in there, you big boy! I don't care what you smell! You can expect more than these beasts within the academy. Be prepared. Influence lost, Hanhar. Well, I should have, uh... Nah, I couldn't resist. Oh... Shit. That's not good. I mean, could you imagine starting here? Her apprentice is here. Find him. It's a trick. No, I can't do the line. I know I've done that line a million times, but, uh... It's a trap! Imagine this is the first place you come, right? And the first thing that happens is you're confronted by the same Sith Lord that took off Kreia's hand. Like, that would be... Like, if I was just starting the game and that was the first thing I'd run into, it's just, I'd just be like... The hell am I doing? I've made a catastrophic mistake and now I'm trapped in here. Journal entry added. I assume to tell me I've been trapped. Yes. <laughs> Search the academy to find clues. Jedi Master. Came here and find a way out. Alright, well I guess we're stuck here now.
Here I told you that there is a great power coming from a cave on Korriban. She explored you to, uh, advised you to explore the academy before venturing into the cave. I I'm, I'm not going to discount that it might be strict drain life force. There we go. So I'm not going to discount that might not be a bad idea, but uh, well, it's the three of us. We're we're gonna make good time, but um, it's uh, playing two pieces of music at the same time. There, it's uh, that's interesting. There are bags here. We can't pick up any of them. Also, isn't this the main menu music? I think it is. I'm not going to complain about recycling music because if it's good music, then why not recycle it? Not going to say anything about uh, Star Wars proper because, oh yeah, didn't, uh, what did they recycle that I hated? Well, I mean, I picked out and it just stuck out like a sore thumb. Oh, um, the droid battle music from Phantom Menace was recycled in, uh, in, um, what was it called? In in the Clone Wars. And when the clones attacked. I'm trying to think. Was... Yeah, Luke's sail barge attack was also recycled. Because in Jedi Academy, if I can go back to Jedi Academy, the alternate... I think it was John's original pitch for the, you know, the sail barge attack in Return of the Jedi is used repeatedly as battle music in Jedi Academy, but they reuse the music from the... Did they reuse a lot of it from A New Hope? I want to say so. I think. I could be wrong. A lot of so similar sounding themes. Anyway, Sith, Sith Assassin. Sorry. There's actual stuff I got to worry about here. Well, allegedly, anyway. Let's see how tough you sons of bitches are. I mean, you've got pikes, I've got a... Well, he's, he's not a hulk, but he's not too far up. Yeah, the music's glitching out and it's annoying me. Nothing to pick up. Okay. Oh, interesting. This sprawls out in many directions. And more Sith, or and they were anyway. This sprawls out about five different hallways we haven't come. The library. Eh, who wants to go to the library? I know I got a recommendation. Oh, well, I guess we're not going to the library. But if it's got a name, we're going there eventually. Now, we can pick the lock. That's not a problem. Oh, that went better than I was expecting, actually. I was ha expecting... Oh, it's some of the old dormitories. I remember this from the first game. Uh, oh, security. It's a footlocker! Yeah, Ubi's environmental suit. Interesting. We've talked about the Ubi's before, haven't we? Hi. That's that awareness thing happening. I was gonna say because the Ubi's oh son of a bitch, Atten. We've been surrounded. Atten, you're on ranged, right? Yeah, now might yeah, now might be a good time to sword. Oh. Hanhar got one. Good carpet. I think I got two focusing on me, which is good because the rest of them will be able to. The other two boys will be able to pick up their pieces. Hanhar is just a Sith killing machine. I know, shocking, right? I remember stealing a bunch of shit from people's dorm rooms in the first game. That I remember from Korriban. 
I don't remember any security checks for that. I want to say it was relatively straightforward. We don't need the cash or anything. We got a lot of cash. How much cash do we have? 51,000, almost 52,000. We're stinking goddamn rich. All right, so let's recenter ourselves. That's the door we came through. So we can go left, center, or right. Now, I say you always go right. But in this case, since I feel like we're exploring, we won't go to the right, because I feel as though sent. Something approaches. Hmm. I don't have any. That's the wrong one. Just say the word. No, and I don't have foresight. Somebody is approaching, though. And I have, yeah, meditation band. I don't have anything for awareness. Eh, I'm out of my reflex, eh. There's a strength package. And skills package. Not quite what I'm looking for, but... I stick with the strength package. Oops. That that's on pause. Yeah, no, someone's coming. Okay, maybe you should just go forward then. That was peculiar Oh, there they are. And there's another one behind me. Yep. I misread that situation. I figured they were cloaked and coming. I wasn't. Ah, and you let them get right by you. Jesus. Don't worry, Atten. We got you. I like how he just automatically switches back. All right. That's, uh. Again, because we're out. Oh, okay. But there's stuff behind there on the map, so I assume we'll be able to get through there at some point. Eh, screw it. Just keep going. We'll outrun it. We'll outrun air. More goats over here. Since I don't think this is going to take us back to, uh... Oh, a bag, finally. Now for those, a jal shape belt and a and data pad with the Tukata. These Tukata are going to be a major obstacle on our hunt for the Sith Holocrons. We've been trying to use our stealth generator to sneak past them, but then some fool bumped into one of them wandering around and got himself eaten. Now the taste of fresh blood has driven the damn beast wild. Master son, he's got a taste for meat now! Is that a way of saying, don't bother trying to stealth your way by him? Because it ain't going to work. So this seems a bit more familiar. Yeah. This is definitely more familiar to me. Except I wouldn't have, uh... I was gonna say, there's just a lot more than the two that, uh... Oh, and the Tukata are here as well. Another storm. I got one. Hanhar is just doing all the heavy lifting. It's a good thing I brought him along. I think I picked the right compliment for this one. Oh, it's a failure. It doesn't mean I'm too low. Yeah. And a failure just means a shitty roll. So. That's all that means. So I'm not, I was. It was more surprised than it was concern. Yeah, computer panels is still working. Oh, student ID. Um, hmm. Bypass login, manually create ID. Creating a new account. New student ID is... There, just in case I need it. <laughs> we got the screenshot saved. Thank you, Steam. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, due to the absence of a headmaster, you've switched to automated training until further notice. Access learning material. 
Yeah, that unlocked a door somewhere. Access training room. Must complete level one written test before being allowed into the training room. Well, can we take the level one written test? The level one test contains five questions. At the end of the test, you will be told how many questions you answered correctly. To proceed to level two, you must answer four questions. All right. Does recommend you study learning material in the library for... Ah. And should the following Sith Lords not possess Tumon Cordoban? Free of Ned. Actually, funny thing that. So I'm going to go and take a quick gun there. Matt Gallen dropped a comment on an older video mentioning that Freed and Ned's tomb is on Duxon. So the number of Sith Lords can. Uh, number seven, the burial ritual of the great Mark of Ragnos. The ritual required all Sith Lords and attendants to be evenly placed in a perfect circle. Ludo Kresh led the ritual from the coveted sixth position, directly opposite Sumus in the sixteenth. How many Sith Lords conducted the burial ritual? Oh, I have no goddamn idea. Six, sixteen. If there was 26, I would have gone with that. If 6 is the most coveted position... 21. And I'm just trying to think... Let's say from 1 to 6 is 5 places. From 6 to 16... Is 10 places. And that's the, the only... My logic only works at that point is so... If the most important position is 5 from the start, and then the next most important position is 10 away, then I'm thinking 5 is the, is the connector there, so 21. Which of the following creatures would be the least suitable? It's a pet for a Sith Master. Oh, bloody hell. A Gizka. Which of the following statements is not a paradox? <laughs> the student teaches his instructor who teaches his student I always lie this statement is false to be powerful one must have an army to have an army one must be powerful uh, the, is no the answer to the question so it's one or four the student teaches his instructor who teaches his student is it really a paradox? It's not really a paradox. But to be powerful, one must have an army. To have an army, one must be powerful. I'd, I'd say one is the least paradoxical? Path to breaking chains is... Oh, Steve, you know this. Uh, through victory, my chains are broken. Yeah, it's one. It's one. I don't remember the, the Sith code off by heart. But I'm fairly certain it's through victory my chains are broken. Test results. Ah, three out of five. What did I miss? The paradox and the, uh, and the, uh... uh it's the paradox and the damned, uh... Uh, uh... What was the other one I didn't think I did well on? The uh, beast. Most oh no the um I probably got the paradox I probably didn't get the circle ah well I guess we gotta go to a library oh well uh, pick that up next time oh never mind well let's uh take care of Takata's first let's uh heal these first. No rains, no rains and oh. Oh, that's annoying. I mean you could try draining life one of them. You haven't been touched. I don't know if that worked or if that's just people hitting it. Okay, keep going for a little bit. You got time. Orange crystal, in case you wanted to 
Who had an orange lightsaber? I'm not sure. Someone must have at some point. Just nail him down. Dad, I've had new recruits, okay. In the absence of many Sith Masters, basic training has been automated. To begin using the training system, access the nearest student terminal and enter new recruit to create a user ID. Oh, in okay, case so you don't have the computer skill that high, you got this. Um, if you encounter any difficulty, solve them yourself. Students who are too weak to be self-reliant will soon fail here. That's entirely fitting with the Sith philosophy, let's be honest. Keep going back this way. Oh, another Takata. No one here. All right. And storm. Yeah, I weren't expect. Atten, what are you doing up so far? Hanhar, hurry up! Oh, there goes Atten. Got his sword out. I don't even know what sort of sword he has, to be honest. A Trandosian sword. Okay, that seems reasonably. There's what five to something. Five to sixteen. So the question is, do you really risk that? Ah, no, it's a double, double-bladed weapon. So yeah, no sense risking that. So, all right. Actually, Spetton. I, I know it's been a while since I've used you and leveled you up, but hey, do you want to give us a shot? First try. Of course he did. That's my boy. Alright. We are uh, cooking with gas. I don't know what variety they use in Star Wars. Oh, a, ch a chewed toilet corpse? Is that the one they were talking about earlier? Is it a trap, really? Time and place, boys. Oh, it was a trap. Very much so. Alright, I'm not worried. Because of that. More where that came from. Hey, I mean... Have you not been watching what the Wookiee's been doing to you? More where that came from. Oh yeah. Speaking of the Wookiee... Have you ever give him a bowcaster? Oh, because that's better than the bowcaster. Since we just saw it. Uh, shock staff. There's bowcaster. Bowcaster. Yeah. Considerably better than the bowcaster, but eh. Wookie frenzy. I was gonna say, what's this? Uh, what's this type, Wookie? Awesome. Oh no, there's crap. Detonator and Twi'lek treasure hunter. Okay. And this is the work log of a Twi'lek treasure hunter. Of interest is this last entry. A J thinks, or A J, maybe not try to fancy it up. Thinks I'm wasting my time. They'll make it past this damn door even have to blow it to bits with the thorium charges. You were sent here for holocrons. I refuse to be the only one to return empty-handed. <laughs> I'll bet even the Ebonhawk couldn't blast through this door. Heavily reinforced door has been fused shut. That's why we need to go find those thorium charges. Uh, so this is. Now, yeah, since so we gotta go back to the center. Which is this way? Nope. Crap, which way am I going? To the left. Alright, this way. There we go. Yeah, now we check that bag. No thorium. Once we find the thorium, we can blow our way through there. So. We went every which way except we have to go to the library in order to study up for that test. That sounds like fun to... Well, eh, I'm kind of overdoing tests, to be honest. <laughs> Did them for like the first... Oh, honestly, with accounting, it was like the first 24, 25 years of my life. So, yeah, I'm kind of over it at this point. Anyway, when did I get my noise? I got my... Designation seven years ago. So that would have been the first 
24, 25 years of my life. Yeah. <laughs> like I said. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, all right. Yeah, anyway. We'll call it a day there. And uh, let's go studying next time. Uh, yeah. I'm sure I can find some alliterative intro that includes studious in it. Maybe. Hopefully. Anyway. Until the next time, I'm on silent. Thanks very much for joining me. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you are new. Share on social media. Follow on social media. Social media handle is on silent on air. That's for Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Tumblr. Don't forget you can check out more KOTOR 2 in the playlist. It's on the screen in the description down below. More videos anytime time on the channel page. And until the next time, I'm on silent. Thanks very much for joining me. Like, share, subscribe. And we will see you next time.